There is a real lot of misinformation going on. Was it funny? No. All our freedoms are being eroded. Freedoms are being eroded, people. you got to stand up. Yeah, I agree with you, not pal. I agreed the fuck out of it. The situation will remain the same until more black people are employed in housing. And black people are still facing large discrimination in employment. They're not even getting to interview stage on equal opportunities policies on the Racial Relations Act of 1976 or the Code of Practice that came out in 81 and trying to get employers to take on the recommendations. And you know, you, you still find that black people aren't even moving into the menial jobs. Balasingam Kumarasan and Selvarasa Sebasan are working illegally in a fast food takeaway. The owner, risking heavy fines or even jail for employing them, makes them stay in the back, out of sight of the public, cleaning and preparing food. According to a former head of immigration enforcement, this is how an estimated one million illegal migrants live in Britain, under the radar, fearful of being discovered. Arrest. What? Arrest. what type of options are there for the kids around here? When they get, you know, work-wise, when they get to kind of 15, 16? None. None. Trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. But who told you that happened? Who told me that happened? The f***ing 150 people that live on the estate that have been over here a couple of months that have got a bigger and better house than us. What have they ever given to this country? Apart from most of them bring fucking AIDS and fucking all that back over here with them. You don't mean that, Harry. Yeah, I fucking do. Yeah, I do. A lot of people would be quite offended by what I'm saying. Were fucking... The NHS is in a complete meltdown because they're letting too many people in the country. You can't cope. Uh, look, whichever way you cut this, Immigration is the number one issue in British politics. It has been for some years. Uh, the opinion polls are astonishing. 77% of the British public want cuts to the numbers coming into Britain, and over half the voters want a reduction to near zero. So people are very upset, they're very unhappy, they're seeing the impact on local schools, they're seeing the impact on GP services, they're seeing the impact on housing or the inability of young people to get on the housing ladder. So that's why it's the number one issue. So whilst he can go home tonight and have a lovely dinner with his wife or chat in a pub about the immorality of borders, he's not the one that has lost the children, mm. lost their family members, lost their loved ones mm. who are facing you know, requirements in their, in their homes where they can't get a house because the council has decided mm. to reallocate short the shortage that they have in social housing to one of the government schemes. And that is the snobbery mm. that exists at the higher end level mm. of those people. It's disgusting, it's disgraceful, and it's utterly, utterly dishonest mm. of these people to sit there in their naivety and gloating over a glass of their greatest champagne mm. whilst there's impoverishment in our country because they fail to do their job. African countries were fed up with white Britain effectively supporting, slowing down the sanctions. And they knew that Margaret Thatcher was part of this. She had actually delayed debates, stopped debates in the British Parliament about sanctions. Before I go on, I would like to condemn violence. I denounce violence, I deplore violence, I think violence is extremely naughty. But do you all condemn the violence? I'm, gl I'm glad you said that. I do condemn violence. I find violence condemnable and I condemn it. But did you condemn the violence yesterday? Commonwealth countries want Thatcher to take a stance against the apartheid regime in South Africa. The Prime Minister doesn't want to be bothered with the problems of the Commonwealth. But did you condemn the violence yesterday? I, I am on record as having condemned violence yesterday. I condemned it in the morning, I condemned it in the afternoon, and I condemned it before I kissed Glynis goodnight and went off to the spare room. I condemn violence! Against Thatcher's will, Elizabeth travels to a meeting of Commonwealth countries, effectively supporting their claims. Thatcher must give in and is forced to the sidelines. Why? Because I've got nothing worthwhile to say, and that's why I condemn the violence. I condemn... Uh, this is exactly the kind of thing I'm not thinking of. <laughs>
in a tyrant becomes a king because he's a son. The Queen's first concern was her grandsons, William and Harry. She said to Prince Charles, we must take the radios out of their rooms. Then she clicked on the television across all the channels, and of course every channel had pictures of... So there's a big argument there. Do we even need all silly England and with them their enemies? Really from the United States. Right. Um, I mean, if you look at the United States, they've had, oh, since Biden came in, over two and a half million people mm. have flow, flowed through the borders of Texas and California. And I think that uh, the, the American public believes that, that in order to get that far, you have to sell off so much that there's not much left at the other end, and that it's reflected in the language that you use. Done when on you... purpose and with calculation, and you said yes. Yes. In fact, I, uh, the, the, I cite a couple incidents, incidents in the book where I can document it was done. One is revenue enhancement. They had a meeting in the Office of Management and Budget. They said, we need a phrase to replace tax increase. They came up with revenue enhancement. When uh, Lawrence Kudlow, the economist, uh, was asked why they did that, he said, because there's no better way to sell economic policy than the euphemistic route. He was quite proud of the fact that they came up with that phrase. And Peacekeeper, as the name for the MX missile, again, Robert McFarlane chaired the committee meeting in which he facetiously suggested that they couldn't name it uh, Widowmaker, could they? So instead, they came up with Peacemaker. But later, President Reagan misread his, his cue cards and said, uh, uh, Peacekeeper. And since it was a televised speech, it became the Peacekeeper. And it was a name that was deliberately designed to make a nuclear missile sound nice. War is naughty, naughty, naughty. In addition, you have um, local authorities. So local authorities are part of this process. They can apply to the government to be part of the various schemes, the relocation schemes for uh, long-term uh, 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 long accommodation, right. uh, dispersal accommodation, or for parts of the schemes that the governments are given towards, say, the Afghan relocation scheme, the Syrian relocation scheme, I'm just using those rather than the official terms. And as a consequence, there's people in the local authority who've got a job, mm -hmm. and then they disperse it to charities and migrant advisory networks. What we're saying is that war makes people dead instead of being still alive instead. Because Peter, when we, the analysis I do is you've got to imagine the journey now, it's wonderful. The Home Office produce a report annually called The Migrant Journey. The bigot is back. Watch out, foreigners, as Xenophobia Jones returns to the screen in The Toilet of Doom. Called The Migrant Journey. The Migrant Journey. The Migrant Journey. See Xeno kill. Maine. The Migrant Journey. The migrant been, journey. The migrant journey. Rush, insult, <laughs> belittle, bump, and massacre anyone. The migrant journey. The has migrant journey. The migrant journey. Absolutely no correlation mm. to the cost of the migrant journey at all. The has migrant journey. The migrant journey. The migrant journey. Migrant journey. What's it say, Dr. Johns? Roughly translated. The wayfarer who seeks relief in the restaurant of Indian type must first traverse the steep stairway of death. The migrant journey. The has migrant been, journey. The migrant journey. The has migrant been, journey. The migrant journey. Migrant journey. Survive the narrow corridor of a thousand trips. The migrant journey. The has migrant been, journey. The migrant journey. The has migrant been, journey. The migrant journey. The migrant journey. Migrant journey. Pass through the room of meaningless cardboard and solve the riddle of the freshly painted toilet door. And if you're trying to find out how many numbers are coming in, it's not there. Oh no! The plane's out of control! The engine's gone! It's gonna crash! Could 
be worse, sugar. And that problem has to be faced up to. If you keep ignoring it, if it will simply get worse until you can't ignore it any longer, and then you will have to face up to it. And things that can't go on forever don't. So that is the problem. That is the issue. That is what we're facing. Xenophobia Jones in the Toilet of Doom. Bye-bye. I think he should apologise.